so you know when you have to make a decision and you're like, oh, something feels kind of not right about this. Yeah, the little <laughs> voice inside your head is like, <laughs> yeah. Well, what is up with that feeling and what exactly do we do about it? Well, by the end of today's episode, we're going to have all the answers that we need. It's going to be it's going to be good. I love it. Let's check it out. What's up, everybody? Welcome to church. My name is Emily, and I'm the pastor for Epic Online. And welcome to Epic Everywhere, a church experience really designed to help you grow in your faith no matter where you're at on your spiritual journey. And while you're hanging out with us, we want you to do four things. Take time to like, comment, subscribe, and definitely share this. And guys, we got an awesome guest co-host hanging out with us today. Peyton's here. What's up, Peyton? Hello, everyone. How are you guys? We're so happy you're here. So glad to be here. Thank you. This is going to be great. Um, and listen, if you guys don't know Peyton yet, you need to know Peyton. Uh, Peyton actually serves with our youth up at our Epic King of Prussia location. And uh, it's just awesome. He has such a passion to be able to reach the next generation and uh, spends a lot of his time and effort and energy uh, behind that. Uh, Peyton also runs uh, a super popular life group. Uh, what's the name of the it's, life group? It's called Quarter Life Crisis. <laughs> Quarter Life Crisis. Yep. It's yep. so good. And so yep. what do you guys like talk about and what do you guys cover there? A bunch of everything? Oh. A bunch of everything and it's specifically designed for 20 year olds to like 30 year olds so so in that 20 to 30 year age range um, we talk about relationships finance uh, jobs careers making decisions just everything with a biblical perspective and it's an awesome time and we would love to have you join <laughs> if you're interested yeah the group gets packed real quick um, but he's got some openings so yep. definitely uh, get signed up for that group we'll drop the link right in the show notes today um, and Peyton what else like should we know about you? Well, so I, I graduated college in the winter, so Penn State, we are, um, and I sell my favorite cars for a living, which I'm so thankful and blessed to be able to do it. That's awesome. So like Hondas and Toyotas and kind of stuff? We have some yeah. Hondas and Toyotas, and I've sold a few. We have a Nissan store, um, but it's primarily Porsches, Lamborghinis, Ferrari, McLaren, Amazing. Yeah. Um, it's a amazing. Um, I, you know, probably will be stopping in there next week just to, you know, take a look yeah. around. Just a, a exactly. little bit nicer than my uh, my Camry. Um, but like, okay, so I'm sure you've met a lot of really cool people and yeah. sold a lot of really cool cars. Is there like one car in particular that you're like, this one was like pretty special? Um, there was one. Uh, it was the one I worked the hardest for, the one that was the most rewarding, and it was my dream car. It was the car that got me in the car. So it oh, yeah. has a special spot in my heart. Um, and that was the Lamborghini Aventador SVJ Roadster. And so here's a picture of uh, oh what gosh. the car looks like. Um, it like glows in the dark. It's yeah. So neat. Yeah. So the one I sold was matte gray, and abs I mean the car's absolutely gorgeous. The doors go up. It's a loud exhaust. It shoots flames. It is it's, wait, spectacular. It shoots flames. So yeah, that's that's what I do <laughs> in my free time. Uh, amazing. <laughs> Outside of church. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I absolutely love it. Um, also, uh, Peyton is well known. Um, he's got a pretty popular TikTok channel. Um, tell us a little bit about what you do up on TikTok. So it never was intended to be something that actually gained a following. It was just something from switching from sharing the gospel and the good news and the love that God has for us on Instagram and kind of just transitioning it to a different platform. And so I started TikTok and I've been fortunate enough to meet so many amazing people, hear so many amazing stories and, and grow closer in my faith with God and hear uh, other people's testimonies as well. So it's been a blessing. That's awesome. Yeah, um, I, I follow Peyton on TikTok um, and it's funny. He's got a lot of really uh, fun and challenging stuff up on there um, and a lot of really great videos. Um, but I actually, I have a bone uh, to pick with you. Uh, Peyton, because I had uh, come across a particular video that I'm not sure how I feel about. So guys, take a look at this. I love sheets, like the, the convenience store in PA and through the South. I, it's so much better than Wawa. Like it is the best. And I make sure to tell people it's the best because I believe it. I know if they go to sheets, they get a buffalo chicken quesadilla, mac and cheese bites, a chocolate milk, like they're going to love it. It's phenomenal. It's so good. So I unashamedly 
share it. I tell everyone. I send pictures of sheets to people. I'm like, yo, you gotta come. You gotta try it. You gotta go there. This is better than Wawa. Now, I mean, we love you, Peyton. You're, you're clearly talented and such a good guy, but uh, seriously, sheets? Sheets is objectively the right decision. It's sheets not. is It's so good. It The buffalo chicken quesadilla, the mac and cheese bites, the app platter. I mean, come on. Wait, it is there's an app the, platter? Yeah, it's the, exactly. Because you don't know what that's like down here. It's the <laughs> best, I'm telling you. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe maybe the menu is, but uh, definitely coffee. Wawa coffee absolutely rivals Sheets coffee. No question about it. Wawa's, Wawa's good. I'm, I'm not going to diss it. Sheets is just... All right, well, we, we clearly feel differently about this. And I know you guys do too. This is like, this is absolutely a common battle and we want to hear from you. So we're going to actually drop a comment uh, question right in the comments below this video. We want to hear, are you pro sheets or are you pro Wawa? You got to be one or the other. Let it be known, folks. No. Just, yeah, just no. come on the light side. Wow, yeah. wow. Okay, uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll uh, tune back into this, um, but we are we are glad you're here, even uh, you. though we have our differences. We're also really glad that you're here and hanging out with us today, and we want to know that you're here today, so we're going to take time to text in. All right, Peyton, give us the rundown. How do we text in today? So you can text in by grabbing your phone, messaging here, to 215-999-8575 and just text here. Let us know you're here. That's right, easy enough. And uh, when you do text us, we're gonna text you right back. Um, some helpful links and also an opportunity uh, for you to let us know how we can pray for you this week. And if you are new, first of all, we just wanna say welcome. We're so excited that you found us. And when you text in for the first time, we get to hook you up with a little gift, some epic right. swag, uh, just to say thanks for hanging out with us today. Um, and this weekend, Peyton, it is a huge weekend in our city. Huge. Yeah, huge. <laughs> so it's massive. So Philadelphia does July 4th right. <laughs> so we have concerts, we have fireworks, we have Old City everything. So we're celebrating this weekend. Yeah, ton of celebrating going down and really just a lot of gratitude surrounding the freedoms that we experience in our nation's independence, but also uh, definitely some things that we're still working through and getting better at. And I'm sure like as you walk through uh, life with a lot of the youth in our city, I'm sure there's things that they're walking through and, and dealing with right now. Yeah, and from teenagers to graduates of college, it's generally the same issues. It's depression, self-esteem, and just a lack of clarity in where to go in life. Yeah, just a lot of different things, and a lot of things that you probably can relate to yourself. And so we wanna have an opportunity to be able to pray over that today. Also pray over our country and our city and our leadership. So Peyton, you wanna get us kicked off? Yeah. So Father God, thank you for the opportunity to be here and to pray over the youth in our city and our, our country. As we go into this uh, awesome weekend of celebration, Lord, let us just keep our eyes focused on you and that we bring our problems, our issues, our struggles at your feet and, uh, and trust your guidance and leadership in our life. We love you, God. We thank you and trust you. Amen. And Lord, we just lift up um, our country, uh, the United States of America, um, so many freedoms that we get to experience. And so we thank you for those. Uh, we thank you for the freedom that we get to experience as followers of you. And so uh, we just ask for your wisdom and guidance over our country and those that are making big decisions. Uh, same thing for our city of Philadelphia. Uh, we know there's a lot of, of changes that need to be made. And so uh, we ask that they're able to seek your guidance and um, be able to take steps in a direction that would be honoring of you uh, leading to more joy and more fullness of life, uh, not just in our city directly, but in our nation as a whole. And um, we give this all to you in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Well, thanks for praying uh, with us, Peyton, and over our next generation that's coming through. And um, listen, there's a lot of things that we're, we're facing, a lot of battles that are being fought, um, but we really do believe that every single battle belongs to God and every victory really is on the horizon. And so this next song that we're going to sing is all about that. So we're going to go ahead and get to it. Let's go Perfect. ahead and sing. See a mountain moon. And now 
as I walk through the shadow, your love surrounds me. There's nothing to fear now, for I am safe. So when I fight, I fight on my knees With my hands lifted I Oh God, the battle belongs to you And every fear I lay at your feet Oh, I'll sing to the night Oh God, the battle belongs to you There's nothing Well, thanks so much for singing with us. Uh, indeed, the battle belongs to God. That's really our prayer for our country. It's our prayer for each and every one of you. And, and the perfect way to be able to walk into Independence Day, um, we're gonna be showing a bunch of love for the US of A this weekend. And we actually have something coming up where you're gonna be able to show love right in the community where you are. Yeah, and it's showering love in the city of brotherly love. And so it's like this perfect combo. Yeah, it seems right, doesn't it? It, it does. Uh, like, like Wawa. Um, it, uh, <laughs> yeah, but no, um, actually we have an entire month that's going to be carved out all about love and we call it, Peyton? This is love. This is love. Yes, it's our community outreach initiative where we are busy being able to love, serve, and really bless the community around us. And we have a bunch of community outreach opportunities that are going to be happening all throughout the month of July that we definitely want you to be part of. Yeah, and it's honestly one of my favorite things because yeah. not only do we get to learn how to bless and 
give and, and serve the people around us, but we're also fulfilling the second greatest command that Jesus tells us, and that's to love our neighbors as he has loved us. Yeah, it's gonna be really, really yeah. special. And so uh, actually today, community outreach projects get kicked off. So today is the official opening of the signups and we want you to be part of it. We also want you to be able to invite your friends, family, coworkers, and really make this a community thing that you're a part of. And so you can head right over to forphilly, F-O-R philly.com to get signed up. Uh, you'll be able to see the links for our different outreach projects that are happening, get signed up. and. And um, make sure that you do that because they absolutely get filled up super, super quick. So we can't wait. It's going to be a really special month of July. Um, and we also want to take time just to thank every single one of you who gives. Um, giving is really fueling initiatives like This Is Love. And I love thinking about generosity and the ripple effect that it has, thinking how generous our God is to us and how generous we then can be to other people and how they can be to other people. And it just kind of goes on and on and on. Yeah, and we want to thank you for being such a generous church and, and following through biblically what God tells us to do and, and for giving to the people around us. And, and not only do we see that in the city, but we see that in our next generation. Yeah, for sure. And so uh, we want to invite you to be part of the joy of giving today. You can do that by heading, uh, uh, texting actually the word give to 215-999-8575. And thank you guys for all that you're doing. Um, and right now we get to go ahead and head into today's message as we actually close out the last message of our That's a Good Question series, which has been really good, really challenging, yes. by the way. Yeah. Um, and we get to hear from one of your buddies, yeah. uh, our youth yeah. pastor, Michael, with today's message. So yeah. come on, let's check it out. What's up, everyone? My name is Michael. I'm the youth pastor here at Epic. And I just want to say, hey, we're so glad you chose to hang out with us today. And if maybe you're new to Epic or new to Church Online, I just want you to know you're not alone. I'm actually new too. My wife and I recently moved up from Alabama and hence the accent, <laughs> but we're gonna have a great time. It's gonna be a great day. But if you'll do me a favor as we get started, just jump in the comments and say, hey, just so we know that you're hanging out with us, we'd love to say hey back and just to say what's up. We've been in a series over the past several weeks called That's a Good Question, where we've looked at Good questions leading us to better decisions and better results so we're not having as many regrets. We looked at the God question and what would be most honoring to God. That's an extremely important question to get us started. We looked at the legacy question and what story we want our lives to tell. And last week we took the time to ask ourselves, are we really being truthful and honest with what we're telling ourselves? Are we telling ourselves the truth by looking at the integrity question? Today, we're gonna to conclude our series by looking at the fourth question that will lead to better decisions and better results. The conscious question, are there any red flags? I remember back when I was 14 years old, our family was taking our first cruise and we had never really had money for a real vacation before. So I was pumped and this cruise did not disappoint. I mean, it had water slides, all you can eat pizza and ice cream, which is the dream. And it even had basketball. And I made so many friends playing basketball on a boat. Who knew you could play basketball on a boat? And it got even better. They had these bougie slushies they called virgin strawberry daiquiris. Now, I'd never heard of a daiquiri before, but these things looked so good. So I just had to try one. Now, quick disclaimer, if you've never been on a cruise before, the workers on the ship are literally from countries all over the world. And it's super cool because you get some insight into their family, their world and their culture. The reason I say that is because the guy fixing my drink was clearly from a different culture. Because when I ordered the drink, it went a little something like this. He said, oh yes, a virgin daiquiri. He did a wink. Who does a wink? Like red flag number one. But I mean, I didn't know any better. And this thing looked super amazing. So I was just like, yeah, bring it, bring it, bring it. So here I am, bougie slushy in hand, right? And I'm sipping and, hmm, take another sip and I'm gonna be honest, it tasted a little weird. Okay, I'm, it tasted a lot of weird. Red flag number two. But again, I didn't know any better and I just thought that's what made it bougie. I, I guess I was right about that. But I down the thing and then I order another and I down it too, at which point I'm starting to feel a little funny. 
Red flag number three. Now, I know what you're thinking, Michael. These red flags are starting to pile up and you should probably stop ordering that drink. Hey, I am with you, but don't worry. I've got this. I'm a smart guy. I know what to do. So what I ended up doing is I ordered two more and I downed those as well. So now I'm four virgin daiquiris in and I'm like, yeah, you know what? Now's a good time to go find my mom. So I wander over and I find mom and I'm like, mom, 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 mom. I, I just gotta, gotta tell you that this cruise is so great and you're so great and I just love you. <laughs> Literally, I'm a mess. I can barely talk. It's a nightmare. And on top of that, what 14 year old goes up to their mom in front of a group of new friends and just expresses their great outstanding love for her? Red flag. And it was a red flag my mom just could not ignore. Somehow, her 14 year old is drunk. And that's a problem because we're on a boat filled with strangers and I'm not in my mind, right mind. And clearly I, I wasn't, I was struggling making decisions already, but now my decision-making process had been completely wrecked. That those red flags that pop up that say, eh, you maybe should make a different decision. I couldn't see. That gut feeling that says, eh, you probably shouldn't do that. I no longer had. That voice in our head that many of us call our conscience that says, maybe you should take a different route. That voice had been drowned out by Bougie Slushy. It's bad. And I know many of you are like, I can clearly see the red flags that you couldn't, Michael. And I get it. The red flags were obvious. But the truth is, many of us can't see those same red flags in our own lives. They're overlooked. They're ignored. And it's bad. We're pursuing a relationship and we just got out of a relationship that ended in fireworks and not the good kind that we're going to see this weekend. But... I mean, it was bad, it was a wreck. And now this relationship that we're pursuing is just the exact same as that one, but we continue to pursue it anyways, telling ourselves, oh, something will be different this time. Ignoring red flags along the way. We apply for this job and something tells us, ah, oh, that's probably not the right job for you, but we need a job and uh, this seems like the best option, so we keep applying anyways. Something in our gut, our conscience, that voice in our head says, that's not the decision you should make. But since it's the easier decision, we make it anyways. The problem is in life is so many times we think we can predict or we think we know the outcome. We're like, oh, we know what's best. I know what's best. It's going to work out in this way. So the red flags oftentimes look more like annoyances than actual caution signs. They're easy to overlook and oftentimes ignored because they're really just in the way. But the truth is many times that gut feeling, those red flags that we see, that voice in our head that we call our conscience, a lot of times it's actually the voice of God, His Holy Spirit leading us and guiding us to what He has for us, directing us and using us to fulfill what He's called us to do. There are tools that He places in our lives to keep us on the right track. I want you to get this today, that the red flags, they reveal the right route. They show us which decision we should make. So the problem is when we ignore or when we decide to miss these red flags, we're actually looking at God and saying, God, don't worry, I've got this. Let me be the leader of my life. I've got it, instead of just allowing Him to lead our lives. And what happens is, is we slowly end up in a place where we never want it to be. We end up in a place where our decisions have caused pain and regret in our lives. The, the choices we've made have hurt, pe hurt people around us and now we've caused stress and anxiety on their lives as well. And no one wants to be in a place like that. No one wants their life to lead them to a place of pain and regret. But the truth is, it's so easy to miss the red flags. So easy, in fact, that people have been missing them for millennia. As evidence of that, we're gonna look at a story in the Bible today. In 1 Samuel, the king of Israel, his name is Saul, and he starts off as a great king, but he misses some red flags along the way. And now some issues and some trouble have stirred up in his life. And at this point in his reign, he's a troubled, comparison-consumed king who is overwhelmed with anxiety. And to make matters worse, everyone, the entire nation, likes his servant David more than they like him. And for a comparison-consumed king, that's a problem. 
so much of a problem that eventually Saul just snaps and he tries to kill David. Like he literally picks up a spear and chucks it at his head. He's like, dude, I am done with you. But thankfully he misses. But this is the beginning of over a decade long hunting spree that Saul goes on to try to end David's life. So for the next years and years and years, David is on the run, separated from his family, living in deserts and caves, eating God knows what, all alone, feeling abandoned and literally scared for his life. And on top of that, when David was a young teenager, he was actually anointed as the future king of the nation. Looks like that's never gonna happen now. But because of David is such a great leader, he slowly starts to build a following. Other people that have been outcast or other people that are also on the run start to look up to David and start to follow him and start to trust them as his leader. The problem with that is, is it's a lot easier to hide one person than it is to hide hundreds. So word gets to Saul that David had been spotted. And that's actually where we're gonna pick up the story today. This is 1 Samuel chapter 24. We're gonna start in verse one. After Saul returned from fighting the Philistines, he was told that David had gone into the wilderness of En Gedi. So Saul chose 3,000 elite troops from all over Israel and went and searched for his, David and his men near the rocks of the wild goats. Now that seems like a lot, like that's a big army for a couple hundred men who probably haven't eaten anything in a long time and they're scared and hiding for their lives, but that's what they do. At this place where the road passes some sheepfolds, Saul went in to relieve himself. You can't make this stuff up. I guess when you gotta go, you just gotta go. But as it happened, David and his men were hiding further back in that very cave. Now's your opportunity, David's men whispered to him. Today the Lord is telling you, I will certainly put your enemy into your power and you can do with him what you wish. This is it. This is David's moment. Like this is problem solved. Prayers answered. All he has to do is kill Saul and that it's, it's over. He's free. So let's see what happens. So David crept forward. Oh, here we go and cut off a piece of the hem of Saul's robe. Wait, what? Cut off a corner of his robe? David, what are you thinking? Of all the caves Saul chose to use the bathroom in, he chooses the one that David and his men are hiding in. Saul had no clue. He would have ventured deep enough into this cave to where his followers couldn't see the king do his business because that's no one needs to see that. It's a private thing and he's the king. So he's in this dark cave, completely alone with no one around and completely oblivious to David's presence. Like, this is it. All you have to do is show up. And on top of that, Saul is in the most critically vulnerable position you can possibly be in, like doing his business. And it's like, David, what are you doing? This, you're not gonna get a better opportunity than this. And you cut his robe? Like if there was ever a clear and glaring need, this guy has been trying to kill you for years. You've been on the run, separated from your family for years because of him. That's a need, you need to go home, you need food, you need family. Like, what are you doing? There's a need and there's a, a way to solve it. And on top of that, his men are relying on him to deliver their freedom as well. If ever you felt pressure from other people, like so many times we ignore red flags because we feel pressured by other people to do what they think is right in our lives. I'm sure David felt that in this moment. Dude, this, there's a need, there's pressure, and still you cut his robe. Dude, what are you thinking? His men had to be furious. Thankfully, he actually tells us exactly what he was thinking. Let's continue in the story. But then David's conscience began to bother him because he cut Saul's robe. Not only did David sense red flags and did David's conscience keep him from killing Saul, but now he feels bad just for cutting his robe. Like, what? He said, the Lord knows I should not have done that to the Lord, my king, he said to his men. This is the same king that's been trying to kill him for years. The Lord forbid that I should do this to my Lord, the king, and attack the Lord's anointed one for the Lord himself has chosen him. So David restrained his men and did not let them kill Saul. David spared Saul's life because he knew that killing him was not what God wanted for him. David crept forward seeing his family, his freedom, and his throne right there for the taking. All he had to do, it was one move and it was over. But as David moved, he sensed the Holy Spirit. He felt the red flags and he slowed down long enough to evaluate. He asked himself, 
What happens if what I'm seeing isn't what actually comes to pass? What happens if I take this step, if I make this decision? What happens if I ignore these red flags and I end up just like Saul? What happens if this isn't the route that God has for me? He slowed down long enough to say, God, is this the right way? And the red flag said no. God's voice said no. David, this is not the route I have you on. This is not the way I would have you do it. So David didn't do it. It would have been easier, yes. It would have solved a clear and glaring need and it would have made a lot of people happy, but it wouldn't have been God's leading. And David knew that because he didn't ignore the red flags. And the red flags always reveal the right route. So how do we make sure we see them? How do we make sure we're not overlooking or even ignoring the red flags in our lives? Well, first we have to know what to look for. Like we have to know what a red flag looks like. And a way that we can do that is by stopping and actually looking back. Maybe you're trying to pursue a relationship right now and maybe a relationship in the past didn't work out so well. What were some things that happened in that relationship that you could learn from? Maybe there were some things you should have saw then that you missed. Remember those things, write them down, jot them down, and let those red flags now keep you from making the same mistakes in this relationship as well. Maybe you're dealing with some financial issues and you're like, I don't know what to do, I don't know where to go from here. Look back and see the decisions you made that got you to this point. And those red flags can now guide you and help you make better decisions right now, but also moving forward. A great way to see red flags is to look back and acknowledge ones we've already missed. And another way that helps us see red flags is to lean on godly counsel. God has put friends, pastors, leaders, loved ones in our lives that we can lean on that will help us see red flags. The Bible actually says in Proverbs chapter 12, verse 15, that a wise person or that a fool knows their own way or they think their own way or their own route is right, but a wise person seeks counsel. A wise person listens to other people. And God has given you those people. God has placed people in your life that you can lean on to say, hey, uh, I'm, I feel this, I'm not so sure about this decision. Like something seems a little off. Can you help me with this? What would you think? Because on, honestly, just like we learned last week, a lot of times people are more honest with us than we're willing to be with ourselves. They can sometimes see things that we often overlook just because they're willing to just look. And sometimes we aren't. Sometimes it's a little easier to ignore the red flag. So let's lean on the godly counsel of other people because it's important. Let's look back and say, what red flags did I miss before? They can help me now. It's important. But the most important thing we can do is to trust the voice of God because that conscience, those red flags we feel are oftentimes His Spirit leading us. I remember back to February 2020, Caitlin and I felt some transition, some things happening in our lives. We were youth pastoring in Alabama at the time and we felt God leading us to something new. We didn't really know why because we were doing a great job and everything was going great, but we just felt some transition happening. So I approached my lead pastor and I'm like, hey, look, I don't know when, and I really don't know why, honestly, but I just feel like God is leading us to something new. And then we get to March, 2020, and we all came to something new. A global pandemic shuts down the world and it shut down a lot of churches. So churches stopped hiring, which meant they weren't looking for me. So at this point, I'm like, oh, did I miss something, God? What's happening? Time passes and time passes and time passes. And almost a year later, I'm wondering, God, did I actually hear from you? Am I actually following you? Am I actually on the right route? Or did I just have some bad Taco Bell and have a make a bad decision and think something that was really happening really wasn't? Like, God, what's going on? But slowly churches start to open and churches start to come back and churches start hiring again. So I'm at this point, I'm just trying to prove that I didn't miss something, that I knew in that moment that I made the right decision. So I'm putting out applications everywhere, like everywhere. And I got really far into the hiring process with a lot of really great churches. But each time something would say, eh, that's not the right one. That gut feeling would say, don't, don't take that position. Something would just say, keep looking. And it would have been so much easier to just accept one of these positions because it would have made me feel like, yes, I actually did hear from God. I'm not crazy. Taco Bell didn't jack my system up. But it also would have just helped my family move along. Like we were living, living in limbo for so long. It would have been easy just to take matters into my own hands and just do it my own way, but it wouldn't have been God's leading. Enter Epic. At this point, over a year and a half has passed and I'm, I'm almost over it, honestly. I'm expecting that little voice, my conscience, God's spirit to say, this isn't the right one, just move on and keep looking. 
But with every conversation, I grew more and more aware, this is it. This is what God has for me and my family in this season of our lives. This is what He is leading us to. This is the route that He has us on. And it was just so uplifting and so great. And now I'm getting here and I'm hanging out with you guys and everything is going so well because I trusted the route that God had me on. Would it have been easier to take an exit somewhere along the way? Yes, but it wouldn't have been God's leading and it wouldn't have led me here today. So I wanna encourage you to trust the voice of God in your life. But in order to trust it, you have to know it. You have to be communicating with him. You have to be talking with him. You have to sit down and pray and ask, God, what would you have me do? What route would you have me take? God, what decisions should I make? Lord, help me. We have to jump into our Bible and read and let it teach us his character and let it speak to us. It is, after all, his word. Let it guide our lives. When we do that, when we know his voice, when we trust his voice, when we lean on the wisdom of other people and the wisdom of past decisions, it helps us to see the red flags. It helps us to hear God's voice clearly and it lets that voice grow louder and louder and louder to where we can't miss it. We can't ignore it. And it's right there and the red flags are easily visible. And that's super important. We all need that because the red flags reveal the right route. So let's let's acknowledge the red flags. Let's follow Jesus. Let, let's let him lead our life. He already has a plan for us, a plan to give us a hope and a future, the word says. And those are big things because none of us want to live in the pain and the regret of our wrong decisions. We want to live in the joy and the life that we get by letting God lead our lives. Is his route always easier? No. Does it always lead to instant gratification? Unfortunately not. David lived on the run for years after this moment when he could have killed Saul but chose not to. He chose to stay on God's route and it didn't lead to instant help. There was still a lot more to come. But he also became a great king and a biblical icon because he trusted the route that God had him on. Caitlin and I are getting to work and partner with a great church and a great team and get to see God do amazing things both in our lives, in our team's life, and in our city's life. Why? Because we trust the route that he has us on. And I wanna encourage you to trust God's leading in your life as well. So let's slow down. Ask the question, are there any red flags? Evaluate, listen to, listen to God's voice and let it grow louder and louder and louder. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. We praise you. We thank you, God. We thank you for your presence in our lives. God, we thank you that you're leading us and guiding us every step of the way. Father, I thank you for the red flags that you show us. They're not just in the way. They're not hindrances or annoying things, but God, they're leading us the way you should have us go. And Father, we can trust in that because we know that you want what's best for us. So Father, help us see those red flags. Help us to take those red flags when we feel them, when we feel that gut feeling or we hear our conscience say, eh, maybe that's not right. Let us, let us seek godly counsel, God. Let us lean on the wisdom of others. Let us look back and evaluate some signs we've missed in our past already. God, let us jump in our word, get to know you. Let us spend time talking to you so we can hear your voice, hear your leading, and trust your leading because you love us so much and you want what's best for us. You proved it by giving everything you have to let us spend time with you. So Father, let us find peace and comfort in that. And let us see the red flags and let us do something about them. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thanks, Michael, for such a great message. Uh, and what he said about, you know, the red flags reveal the right route. It's so good. Yeah, and it's, it's honestly way easier to ignore the waving <laughs> red flags that are on fire. Um, but it's imperative that we seek God's guidance, ultimately, and, and wisdom from the people around us. Yeah, that wise counsel is so important. So yeah. two things that you want to definitely be making sure that you're putting into action this week. And another uh, step of action to take is to get signed up for This Is Love, those community outreach projects that are happening throughout the month. The signups are now open. So head right over to four philly.com to get signed up. There's a project with your name on it, so make sure that you're there. Um, and Peyton, hey, it's been such a blast having you today. And um, I thought it would be cool just to get you a little, a little gift, a little something, um, just oh, you know, no. just to say thank oh, you no. for being here. So um, here you go. Yeah, it's been a thank blast. You. Oh um, gosh. Epic everywhere has been better a, because of you. Oh my goodness, we got a <laughs> Wawa mug. And then we have, oh gosh, it says John and it's yes. <laughs> retro Wawa look. I, I don't know if I can be seen wearing this. Yes, you can and you will. Uh, we'll invite you back on to Epic Everywhere and it's a perfect time oh, perfect. to wear that. Um, but seriously, no, it's been a blast. Thanks for being thank here. You and for having thank me. you all for hanging out with us today. Have a happy 4th of July happy and we'll 4th. see you next week. See you guys.
Well, hey, thanks again for doing church with us today. If you're new, we're glad you're here. I want you to know we do church like this online every single week, and we'd love for you to be a part. Now, if you're local, we have large in-person gatherings at locations in and around the city called Epic Live. It's a full-on party. So check out our website for a location nearest you. Now listen, we'd really love to meet you. So I wanna personally invite you to the welcome party. It's an opportunity for us to connect, hear some of your story, share some of ours. So text the word here to the number on the screen and we'll get you all hooked up. Hey, I really do believe that God has an incredible plan for your life. And we just wanna do our part to help you discover what that is. Thanks again for hanging out with us today. We'll see you again live or online next week.